Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to The Toast. Happy Wednesday. It is hump day, a favorite here at The Toast. Make sure this is your reminder that you hump someone you love today. And there's nobody I love more. No girl who grinds my gears gets me more alive than Jackie O. Hey, Jax. Hi. Thank you. I love every day to hear what you're going to say about me. It must be like so much pressure every day having to come up with something new and flattering and it never really goes the other way though I compliment you throughout the show it's not pressure it's not pressure it's just this you know need for creativity I don't want my interest to ever feel stale oh I don't think anyone could ever say that they are well good that means I'm doing a good job at your job at me job that is your job oh no I'm gonna lose me job (laughs) what's that from it's a TikTok sound. Everyone was like, oh no, I'm panicking because I'm going to lose my job. And then when they found like the actual origin of the video, it's actually really dark. I'm sure. You know those, you know those um, no, it's not what you think. You know those people who like set up and pretend to be like teenagers on the internet and find predators and then meet up with them and like film them. Like, are you talking to a 13 year old? Yeah, like they do it in an official capacity usually. Sometimes it's just like people's YouTube channels. Not fun, but like to scare predators okay. into... And so they caught this guy and he was like this freaky looking dude and they were following him around with the camera when they met up in the parking lot. He's like, no, I'm panicking because I'm going to lose my job. I think he was Irish or something. It was honestly like fucking hysterical. I hope he did lose his job. Oh my God, that's crazy. I told you, dark origins of TikTok sounds. (laughs) That's crazy. Yeah, I, I love finding out the origins of like viral trending audio. A lot of the time it comes from like old reality TV that I mm-hmm. know, you know? That's like when everyone was doing, you know, Gia Judice's song. Oh, of course. I knew it, but like people were shook to find out what it actually, most people didn't know. But that's also from reality TV is, hey, how y'all doing? Of course, also, mm-mm-mm today drained me <laughs> it's marlo from real houses of atlanta like sometimes i recognize the bit sometimes i recognize the voice but every now and then i get a little surprise like i'm gonna lose my job <laughs> some of mine that are my favorite at actually come from podcasts which it's like do you feel like you want to talk less shit mm, no because uh i like it <laughs> yeah we did kind of go viral on tiktok like that's why tiktok can't be banned like what would we go viral on reels Shorts. Shorts. YouTube shorts. Shirts. Maybe we'll have to start posting our podcast clips to Facebook stories. (laughs) (laughs) I just want to say, and I know it's probably an accident, I have never in my life seen anyone post a Facebook story except your husband. But I think it's something with his Instagram that automatically sends his Instagram stories. I don't think he knows. Or no, he's just like, he doesn't story that often. So when he does, he's like, sure, let's blow it up. What if I just... What if I just shared it to Facebook? What if I just syndicate it to all my channels? Right. It's actually really cute when I see it, but that's the only time I ever see like someone I know doing Facebook stories. That's so funny. I'll have yeah. to tell him. He was called out. Every, every now and then when I post an Instagram story, they're like, want to syndicate this to your Facebook? I'm like, are you trying to ruin my career? <laughs> <laughs> trying to ruin my life? My reputation? I have friends. I have family. I have an image to uphold. Yeah. Can't be seen on Facebook stories. No. Um... Sorry, tangential. <laughs> yeah, but tangential. that's what the show is. The tangent. The tangent. Feel free to go off on one anytime. Well, it's Wednesday, just some housekeeping. Big day here. You know, we got lots to talk about. We also have Dear Toasters, our weekly advice segment. We have three really good submissions. I think I think we'll be able to make a lot of, impact a lot of positive change. Yeah. Were you going to say something? Yeah. Okay. I was just going to agree with you. I was going to concur. And it's also our last real episode of the week because I'm headed to Portugal tonight. I have been just nonstop, you know, prep, packing, make sure everything is settled at home, getting Ben. Oh my God, Ben, like still not packed. Still not packed. We're leaving for the airport in four hours. Still not packed. What is he doing? He's at a trade show, um, which is important. You know, Vin Expo is a big one, Javits Center. So I'll allow it, but pack, pack. Yeah. No, I, I don't understand these men. No, it's, it's next level. And He got back from Boston on Friday. That bag was still not unpacked. And you need to use the same bag. Oh my God, I just, it could never be me. And I'm really trying to learn, like, as I get older, just like not to get so pressed about, it's not me, like I'm packed. Like, why can't I just be happy with my productivity? But it's because my productivity is irrelevant when my partner is You're only as strong as your weakest link. 
Thank you. So I know some some people will be like, don't be such a bitch wife. Like, let he'll get packed. But it's like, it starts impacting me. If he was, when he goes on his solo trips and he throws a t-shirt into a backpack the day before, I don't fucking care. But I'm going and it's like, it's a big trip. It's international. We need our global entry. Like, there's a lot of productivity that needs to be done before. Yeah. And he just doesn't understand. Just wait till you have a baby and it's like, I pack for me and Harry and we're all packed before Zach even gets his suitcase out. No, and like it's like there's no excuse. If I, I and it's can't. like I'm packing me and him, so it's like I'm. It's not like I'm some low maintenance. No, you're a queen, a glamour puss. I'm a, especially if we're traveling. Of course, glamour, glamour, bags, New outfit every day, jewelry, of New course. Every day. Oh, and me and Harry like share luggage a lot of the time. It's just easier. Mm-hmm. Um, and Zach gets his own and still can't be, get done. He like overpacks, and I'm like, I'm wearing a different outfit every day, and. I'm sharing. And I got Harry's crap in here. And you know he has a lot of crap. A lot of crap. You know what? I, I actually woke up this morning thinking, I, and I wanted to tell I do you. So, I do put some of Harry's crap in. Like we, but we split Harry's stuff. That's what we do. Mm-hmm. That way we only have to have two suitcases. Life hack. Life hack. <laughs> um, I just thought, you know, as I was walking into work this morning, something I wanted to share with you that I only really wanted to share on the podcast so people can know, like, how nice I am. Um, I really miss you. Like, I really, like, I woke up today. Some days are harder than others, honestly. Like, and I woke up today. Maybe it's because, like, I've had, like, a 12-hour migraine. So I'm not feeling my best. I'm feeling low. I have, like, a busy, like, kind of anxiety riddle day in front of me. And I just was thinking, like, I miss my family. It's, It's, like, today, like... It's not cool that I can't like wrap the toast and go over to Olivia's house and yeah. see the kids and, and just go, like, like hang. It's not cool. It's not cool. No, I know. I miss you. I miss you too. And I actually had a dream about New York last night and I was just like having an amazing time. Three bucks. Two, two bags. bags. Yeah, because we don't bring one for Harry. Right. One, one roll. Um, and I keep being like, you know, maybe I'll just like, what if I just come to New York next week? I can't come next week because I have a doctor's appointment. I have a friend's birthday and just like, I busy Florida things. Busy, And then like the following week, like then you're coming so soon. So yeah, it doesn't make sense. And then you're going to be here for at, like over a week, which is nice. So we'll, we'll look for, we'll shoot for April. Yeah, Jax and I are spending Passover together, which is just lovely. And also, I'm coming down a few days early because Jax and I have kind of been, like, not even spoken about how we've been asked to speak at a prestigious university. Yeah, we are... They want our expertise. Academic girlies. And yeah. we're going to go talk to some students. And we're going to, I think, impact, you know, positively on the new generation. I hope. Yeah. I don't see how we couldn't. I don't see how we could either. We're so That's positive. exciting. That's exciting. Our first like academic. I have to figure out what I'm going to wear. I need a pair of glasses. Yeah, I have to figure out what I'm going to wear. Like I need something that fits. Well, yeah, always. Uh, need something that fits. Need something that makes me look snatched to the gods. Need something Which that makes you me are. Look, need something that makes me look literary. Yeah. Like a merit scholar. Yeah, maybe I should do some shopping today. Even though I just got some like stretchy dresses from Skims. That should be good for just like maternity wear. Yeah. But I think that's a little skimpy for yeah. the university. No, we can't be looking like big whores at no. the university. Yeah, we cannot. And, and we're always looking like whores, so it'll be hard for us to find something. Um, Dressing like a whore and stopping, and stopping the negative, negative self-talk. self-talk. Another viral audio of ours that went viral on TikTok. I'm surprised like more of our audios don't go viral because really any moment could. Like this one right here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> do it. Oh my God. Jackie's so cute. Like, isn't she so cute oh my God, today? Dirty Lou. Like, do you have bad news to deliver that you're just buttering me up? No, no. Maybe it's like because I'm leaving the country. I feel like I'm going to miss my family oh, even more. You're feeling I'm homesick. Just, I'm just missing the family. And I had everyone over for dinner on Monday night. And obviously, you and Olivia weren't there. So it just fucking sucked. Like, yeah. It's not. Just really missing, missing you. Missing you Tur- too. Turdy's missing her Lou. We'll be reunited soon. I know we'll be together again, cause everywhere I go, every smile I see, I know you are there, Marshall Anthony. Whenever Brian sings that song, he puts, by the way, that's something Brian and I have in common. He'll put his dog's name into popular music whenever he can. And he calls his dog Marshall Anthony, even though Anthony is not his last name. Um, And now I can't sing that song with Marshall Anthony. 
That's so funny. I was going to say, are you excited to travel with the Snatchler this weekend? I am. I love getting some downtime with the Satch. Um, we've been like talking a lot, you know, sharing like outfits. So I just feel like I'm hanging out with the popular crowd, you know? Yeah, I was FaceTiming her last night. She was like showing me some dresses. Yeah. That she was thinking about. It's very exciting to kind of like roll with the popular crew, you know? Yeah, I'm excited for you. You're like my nerdy friend who I like leave behind to go hang out with the popular kids. Totally. Lol. But you can really only be yourself around me. Yeah. And you know the real me. Yeah. But at a certain point, like my feelings do get hurt when it's like. Of course. You're when you're with the populars, it's like I don't exist. Yeah, no, and, like, we have this arrangement, like, when I'm with the populars, like, we pretend like we don't know each other. Yeah, and, and it's And that hurtful. eventually starts to chip away at you, at your self It does. Work. At first, I was like, listen, you know, she's a social animal. She has to do what she has to do. And, like, this maybe, you know, has, how it has to rising be. tides rise all shides. Like, she'll, you know, get cool and then make me cool. That's how it starts. Yeah, yeah. But I'm also, like, the nerd with, like, too much pride. I don't want to be a part of the popular crew. You are the nerd with too much pride. <laughs> I'm the nerd who takes off his glasses and everybody realizes he's handsome. That's true. You are handsome. <laughs> Don't be rude. <laughs> Don't be fucking rude. You're beautiful, Turdy. Thank you. Um, so we've got a great we show so today. We have so much to do today. Like this episode, we can't outrun our memory cards. So. I know. We're outrunning your memory, memory card. card. <laughs> That's good. That's really good. I am so impatiently waiting for Luke Combs' new album. Like every song that drops, I haven't even spoken about how deeply connected and moved I am by his most recent single Joe you did talk about oh it. oh sorry okay but what's crazy is I, I I love the song just like I love every Luke song but it, it doesn't speak to me as much as the other one he released before it love you anyway oh my god one of the most beautiful Luke songs of all time I know but there's like a verse in Joe that like really makes me tear up I feel like if you've even been remotely or like distantly known of someone who struggles with addiction the song has to make you cry listen to this part ready some battles are fought on foreign shores and some are fought behind closed doors damn wait hold on there's a better part after that damn no i know it's like so deep he's such a poet and nobody even knows it because he's just like you know this big fisherman countryman like no but they know it okay ready they know some battles are fought on foreign shores and some are fought behind closed doors some fall from grace some lose their wings some find the peace salvation brings it's so nice like i feel like if you're like a sober queen or any sort of addiction like i feel like that song could be like a real piece like a solace for you you know um Speaking of songs about sobriety, Charles from Lady A recently got sober. Yes, I know. And he put out a solo song. um, Oh, wow. About, I I think it's called As Far As You Could. Like that pretty much like he, like he drank for as long as he could. It took him as far as he could. Right. Um, But he had to eventually put it down. It's beautiful. It's like straight up about his addiction to alcohol and how it brought him, like it, you know, gave him the courage to meet, like to go up to his wife. He made her laugh, also made her oh. cry. Oh, no, that's sweet. I, uh, I'm i really happy for Charles from Lady A. I feel like his battle had been like this open secret in country music. Like a lot of people knew about it. And like, you really can't force someone to make the change. Like they have to want to do it themselves. And I recently saw him post his trip to rehab and he looked very good. He looked very healthy. He had like this light back in his face. So I'm excited for that journey. And I'm going to listen to that song on the plane today. I can't wait to cry. It's beautiful. Add it to your list. I'll add it to my list. Um, I've also been listening to Morgan Wallen's new album. Oh yes, that's what I wanted to ask you. I just started to, it's so long. So I'm a few songs in. So good. What's so crazy is like, I wasn't even desperate for a new album yet. Like one, he puts out three new songs every few weeks. Yeah. And like the old album, I'm still obsessed with. Like Same. it's not stale to me. So my cup runneth over. Yeah, my thoughts, initial thoughts on the album, and maybe I'm not able to see it yet because it's just 36 songs, but they all, they do sound like really repetitive. Mm-hmm. Um, Like only a few of them really stand out to me. And maybe I need to listen to it better to like really get it. But I was just, I, I don't think it compares to his previous album, but I do really love the song Keith Whitley, like love. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the middle of it. But you know what album I did complete a few times that was wonderful? Nene Pink? Webb's album. Oh. 
Pink's yeah, album's good to too. To Pink's album's good too. But Mimi Webb, it's called Amelia, and she's a star. We've got a lot of new music coming. Jonas Brothers, Ed Sheeran, Luke. I, I seriously like. I cannot wait for Luke's song. Yeah, uh, album. I know, like, but I still, I, in, I still put on growing up album course. every time I get in the car. No, of course. Like, and I'm I, not I have, tired of it. I'm not tired of it either. But the singles he's been dropping has been leaving me with this thirst. Yeah, I'm thirsty. You know? Yeah, <sighs> I don't have enough time in the day to listen to all this music. I know, but now that I'm dr- a driver, maybe I will. Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. But let's get into everything. So much to discuss today. Plus, dear toasters, we don't want to disable our memory memory cards. cards. So without further ado, taking up the memory cards, here are the Fast Five stories that you need to know. And today's episode is brought to you by Noom. Trends and fads come and go, especially when it comes to health and wellness. But Noom is not a fad. They use psychology, not trends, to help you make an intentional and sustainable choices that are aligned with your values and your weight loss goals. So whatever your reason for wanting to lose weight is, whether it's to feel better overall, to fit into certain clothing, maybe you're just at a place in your life where you felt like it spiraled a little bit and you want to get back in control, check out Noom. With their psychology-based approach, Noom empowers you to build more sustainable habits and behaviors The program helps you understand the science behind your eating choices and why you have cravings. Everyone's journey is different, so your daily lessons are personalized to you and your goals. So whatever your health goals are, the Flexible program focuses on progress instead of perfection. You can choose your level of support from five-minute daily check-ins to personal coaching. Progress is rarely a straight line and off days are totally okay. Noom will help you get back on track. That's what I really like about Noom. It's like some days you just can't. And you don't have to throw away all the progress that you've made with Noom. Like they account for that. You had a bad day, you're hungover, or you're just feeling sad. That's okay. We're going to get you back on track. You don't have to start over just because you messed up. Stop chasing health trends and build sustainable healthy habits with Noom's psychology-based approach. Sign up for your trial today at Noom.com slash toast. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash toast to sign up for your trial today. You can also check out Noom's first ever book. It's called The Noom Mindset, and it's a deep dive into into the psychology of behavior change. It's available to buy now wherever books are sold. Again, that um, promo we have is Noom.com slash toast, N-O-O-M dot com slash toast. Today's episode is also brought to you by The Perfect Bar. Looking for a protein bar that actually tastes good? Well, look no further than Perfect Bar. With their lineup of fresh from the fridge protein bars, Perfect Bar is exactly what you've been looking for. No chalky artificial aftertaste here. They're made with freshly ground nut butter, organic honey, and over 20 organic superfoods. Perfect Bar has a variety of products like protein bars, little snack size bars that are also good and good for you. You'll be sure to find something you love. I've been raving about my favorite flavor, which is the dark chocolate chip peanut butter with a little flaky salt. I love um, these bars, one, because I'm not like a big bar person, but because all of their uh, ingredients are like organic and it's real food, you keep them in the fridge. And there's just something about that that feels like much better, not like eating some preservatives that's been sitting on a shelf for a year. Um, They have a cookie dough texture that's creamy and full of flavor and they're unlike any other bars out there. And the snack size bars are the perfect size. They're packed with six grams of protein and 150 calories. So a little goes a long way. You will feel full throughout the day. You'll have energy throughout the day. You don't have that crash. They're made with whole food ingredients. They contain no artificial preservatives. And if you aren't already convinced, they're also non-GMO, project verified, gluten-free, soy-free, kosher, and low GI. Perfect Bar knows that it'll be love at first bite. So for a limited time, they're offering you a chance to try their refrigerated protein bars for free. Here's how it works. Sign up for email or text, upload a picture of your receipt from your local grocery store, and they'll reimburse you the cost of one bar. It'll go directly into your Venmo or PayPal account. All you have to do is go to perfectsnacks.com slash toast to get that free Perfect Bar today. That's perfectsnacks.com dot com slash toast to get a free perfect bar today that's just kind of what we do here at the toast free food like i'm always going to point you in the direction of free food that's a little fun fact about me (laughs) okay thank you claudia our first story an update on the scandal we've got a couple first raquel has broken her silence and put out a statement exclusive to entertainment tonight about her apologizing yeah Quote, I want to apologize for my actions and my choices foremost to Ariana and to my friends and the fans so invested in our relationships. There is no excuse. I am not a victim and I must own my actions and I deeply regret hurting Ariana. I am reflecting on my choices, speaking to a counselor, and I'm learning things about myself, such as my patterns of codependency and addiction to being and feeling loved. I've sought emotional validation through intimate connections that are not healthy without regard for my own well-being, sometimes negatively affecting others and often prioritizing the intimate connection over my friendships. I'm taking steps to understand my behavior and make healthier choices. 
Although I chose to be on a reality show accepting the good and the bad that comes with it, beyond my own actions, I have been physically assaulted, lost friendships, received death threats, and hate mails in addition to having my privacy violated. I've begun counseling to end my unhealthy behavioral cycle, learn to set stronger emotional boundaries, and learn to protect my mental health. I don't expect sympathy, understanding, or forgiveness. Right now, I must focus on my own health and well-being as I strive to be a better person moving forward. I will prioritize my mental health and learn from my mistakes. So this news broke on Friday. Um, so she learned all of that from a counselor since Friday. Is the counselor living with her? Like I'm like you meet with a counselor once a week. Okay, maybe twice a week. Or so. maybe it's something that like she, you know, knew about herself sort of over the years and could see this pattern in herself, but like really couldn't identify it until she blew up her whole world with her actions. I mean, at the end of the day, there's quite literally nothing she could say that would make this better. So nothing. like we're just we're going to pick apart whatever she says. Um, like, cool. There's not, we said that yesterday. There's absolutely nothing she could say, but she has to say something yeah as far as what she could say i think this is as good as it gets like she's yeah. accepting responsibility she's not a victim she's it's more than tom sandoval did in his first statement she's apologizing in the direction where the apology needs to go that's all she can do at this point there's nothing that's gonna like change hearts and minds the chips have are continuing to fall where they may the out what's the word the um outcome no the fallout yeah just it will have to continue to fall out until things can like even begin to conceive of rebuilding forgiveness making it better um in the final paragraph where she references being physically assaulted that is kind sheena. of confirms a rumor that sheena had found out the night before it came out and slapped her they were like i think it was right after watch happens live right yeah when sheena found out apparently she either slapped her or punched her in the face and raquel has filed a restraining order against sheena so, a lot of, and she was granted that the restraining order a lot of people say that it's like a ploy for her not to have to show up to the reunion in two weeks because she can't be within a thousand feet of of sheena but you know what that sheena doesn't sheena's go to, not, sheena doesn't sheena's go. on zoom sheena's on zoom no but i wonder how restraining orders work with like contact you can't be contact can be no so sheena's not at the reunion because bye even though what raquel did was really terrible like you don't punch someone in the face. No, Sheena's 100% wrong for that. It's like, that, that's just so Sheena, like so erratic, you know? Yeah, just having um, such like an extreme opposite reaction. Yeah. Like instead of just having like a level-headed reaction the entire time and not setting up your friend with the other friend and, and then like... Right, right. You so know? extreme both ways. You're so, so right. extreme both ways. So that was okay. like, and now she's going to ruin... If she... Like, I hope this doesn't stop Raquel from coming to the reunion... And if Raquel doesn't go to the reunion, like she obviously shouldn't be on the show anymore. That's been the rules forever. But the restraining order does throw a wrench into things. But for me, it means that Sheena won't be there. Sorry, yeah, and Sheena, I'm fine with you that. You played yourself. You played yourself. That was really dumb of her. And she's wrong. You don't fucking hit someone. But and now apparently, I'm just curious. I, like Raquel has a black eye is what I heard. Yeah, I know. It was like a, it was like a fucking, it was a punch. And it must have been something that left a mark because she probably has pictures, which granted yep. her a restraining order. But I am curious, though, about the timeline. Like, do you think she... So Sheena found out after Watch Robbins Live. What's Wednesday night? The news broke on Friday, and apparently Ariana found out on Thursday night. Is it just a happenstance that Sheena and Ariana found out two days apart? Or did Sheena tell Ariana? You know, because we know that Ariana found out from the cell phone video. I thought maybe, Ariana found out first. I thought Ariana found out Wednesday night. After oh, the show. I, I, I guess, no, what night was Tom's show? I believe it was Wednesday night. Oh my. So they both just randomly happened to find out the same no, night? No, Ari Ariana found out and told everyone. <gasps> oh, 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 you're right, you're right. Okay, sorry, that's definitely what happened. Okay, I needed the timeline in my head. And that's what Ariana I, I believe. And then Sheena found out and she was like, oh my God, punch. Oh, and she happened to have been with Raquel, with Raquel when she found out. Okay, that tracks. Okay, that makes sense. Um, this is just it's getting crazier and crazier tom sandoval also released another statement i guess he saw the dissatisfaction from his crapola first statement i can't read so many statements you know you get one I, you get one he apologized to ariana primarily and that his actions the way he went about them were completely wrong duh there's also so much coming out now about production because they are filming apparently raquel and tom filmed a scene they kissed so like yeah. they're still together um and then but there it was, was another scene. They kissed, but it was like, compl I think their relationship is complicated right now. Then there was another scene that apparently was filmed and San Tom Sandoval was really unhappy with it. Um, and 
he wanted to reshoot. They were he was told no, and now he's refusing to show up for filming. There's no way he's going to turn. Like if he doesn't show up to filming, then he won't show up to the reunion. Then he doesn't have a job anymore, and then it's all over for him. He has yeah. to show up. Yeah, I, I will be so disappointed if either one of them doesn't show up to the reunion. Like that is so. That's such like a bullshit thing to do. Yeah, I think they will. I hope that they will. This saga just keeps unfolding. Also, like, Tom Sandoval was seen going to therapy. Okay, that was obviously staged. Yeah. Like. He was seen going to therapy? Like what? Like, one, they're following him everywhere. Yeah. In that he went to therapy. Right, because he knew people were following him. Like, yeah. I, I, I mean, there's I, probably cameras and we have to watch a scene with Tom Sandoval telling a therapist, right. I don't know why I do that. Leave me alone. I have no ounce of like grace or <laughs> even remote like sympathy for Tom Sandoval. Like, you know what? I, I could make an argument about Raquel. She really is this like very like easily manipulated, quiet, shy. Like I and there's no honestly, there's no excuse for that. Like you're 30. Get it together. Um, But like I could make an argument for like how Raquel no, I potentially. Have, I have a little bit of sympathy of the way that Raquel's being treated just because it's more than a human being can handle. Yes. Um, uh, And Tom Sandoval is being treated the same way. I have no sympathy. I have not one ounce <laughs> of anything to give to Tom Sandoval. I literally don't. I don't. Yeah. And I feel like he's loving it. Like, I just really feel that way. Which is crazy to think. Crazy to think. But, like, I wonder. It's so messed up. Because it's like, they have to show up for the reunion. It's in their contract. And they don't want to yeah. be. But, like, they could probably bargain for more money to come back next season. The two of them. Unless... I don't know if their contracts are at a place where they renew oh, every year. Got it. Okay. Oh, yeah. If either one of them Because it's like people are contract, saying they should get fired. It's like, I think they oh. might get a promotion. Yeah. Well, that's just so weird about reality TV. Like, yeah. the worse you are, the more you're rewarded, which is why it's such a toxic environment, environment and yeah. why it ends up being really good. Um, and, and it's like your personal life. So you need to, like, intentionally blow up your personal life in order yep. to succeed in your career but then like it's, your personal life and your career are completely at odds a hundred percent if either one of them are in a position where their next contract where their contract ends at the end of the season then yes they are both going to be flying high yeah which is just crazy to think crazy to think so what do you think we're do you think we're going to hear from ariana like I was thinking, you know, I could see like Alex Cooper getting in there and like, you know, getting Ariana on, on the chair. But because they have this show, like that's their platform. Like they're not going to give this moment to someone else. Already Lala said she recorded an episode with some cast members talking about it and production season it. assisted it. They had to oh. record something else. It will be out later today, but it should have been out this morning, but it got delayed because production is like probably not trying to ruin their own show. No, good. They, like, they really should keep everything. And I know we're all so eager to, like, know what's going on right now. Um, but let's let's let it unfold. Like, I really do want to see how it plays out on the TV show. I don't really don't want to hear podcasts. You know what they really should be doing? What? Is getting the Love Island editors. Yep. In the studio and putting out episodes now. We care now. We'll care again in a few months and it will, everyone will be watching. But, like... You're, we're never going to care as much as we do right now. No, and at the end of the day, this entire saga is a real um, case study in how traditional reality TV is antiquated. People's attentions are spans are so short. How you can like you really are letting this moment go by not capitalizing it, capitalizing on it for the show right now. And they also need to be editing the next episodes condensing them yep so that there are like episodes after and we don't have to watch you know sheena getting her nails done talking about some nonsense so there's fewer episodes that we have to watch until the big break yeah honestly i could argue that a big chunk of this season could be cut like let's just keep the tom and schwartz stuff i mean the schwartz and raquel stuff just to see like what the fuck their angle was there mm -hmm. and then to make you know the bombshell of raquel and sandoval even more yeah big yeah so that's the latest. Oh my God, totally random tangent right now. You wanna hear something so devastating? Mm, like no, local, but sure. My local Dwayne Reed is going out of business, which is like, if you live in New York, like your local Dwayne Reed is life support. 
But based on everything you've shared with us, or I don't even know if you said on the show, like it makes sense. It's getting robbed like every day. No, yeah, okay. So every time you walk in there, there's somebody holding up, you know, the entire store with a knife. But I still need that. Like what, it, I, I can't tell you how many times in the middle of the night, like we've had to run out and the Dwayne Reed, like there's a no, Dwayne Reed on every. I understand. And I and also don't live in like up. a, I live in like a, a residential area so there's not a ton of businesses yeah there's not like all right okay i'll walk with another block to the other bodega there isn't and i just i'm upset i'm sorry Terry. it's been really tough my local pharmacy going out well there's go puff yeah and you'll have is. to just be better about keeping stock of everything yeah when in my last apartment i wasn't really i wasn't technically near to a pharmacy but i didn't live on top of one which means i wasn't yeah and you had to like get stuff on amazon you just have to be like more aware of it i know vigilant vigilant you can't just like go down for a snack a bag of chips no and can i tell you how many times i've just gone down for a hershey bar like a little something sweet yeah no i used to live on top of pharmacy three apartments ago and wasn't it the best i did my grocery shopping there yeah of course my god ben's always coming back from the pharmacy with like avocados i'm like where did you get that yeah it's like Dwayne Reed. no now you gotta instacart so it's just like a something difficult I'm dealing with on a personal level that I wanted to share. I'm really sorry about that. Thanks. Thanks for your support. I hope something great comes in into the space. That's a it great won't. point. That's a great point. Yeah. Something that big. I mean, it's gonna I would be a love. Bank. I know. I'm surrounded by banks. And you bank, only need bank, one. Bank, 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 bank. Yeah, you only need whatever one is yours, which there already is in your neighborhood. I guess that's true. Put a positive spin on it. I really didn't think about what might be coming next. Like a lunch spot. Oh my God. Don't play with me. A lunch spot? It's too big for a lunch spot. What a, like a, a, a spot that sells warm bowls? Mm. Mm. I love a warm bowl. Yeah. It's not a great location for a lunch spot. No. Though you live like, but there's a lot of like fashion near you too. Yeah. Yeah. Could be fashion. Great. What if it were Amazon fashion? Oh my God, if they opened like an Amazon Go, you know those like Amazon oh, stores that Oh, that'd be perfect have, for you. They have like a Starbucks in there. They also have like a bookstore. Yeah. Like, and you don't have to pay like your phone just like dings and you could walk out with all your shit. I love that. That's what you need. Manifest 100%. it, Turdy Lou. Um, man, even though there is an Amazon Go like two blocks away, so they're not going to open one. Maybe it does so well they need another. Manifest. I'm manifesting. Are you ready for our next story? Yeah. Cara Delevingne is on the cover of Vogue talking about her substance abuse and entering a 12-step program. She says, I was oh. not okay. Oh. Cara Delevingne is speaking out about getting help. In an interview for the April cover of Vogue, the model and actress shared that she entered a 12-step program after paparazzi photos last year gave her an urgent wake-up call, explaining that her behavior was tied to the pandemic's effect and her milestone 30th birthday last August. So we all remember the paparazzi photos um she explained that she was like coming from burning man the party just never stopped and she thought she was having a good time until she saw those photos she said quote Mm. i hadn't slept i was not okay it's heartbreaking because i thought i was having fun but at some point it was like okay i don't look well you know sometimes you need a reality check so in a way those pictures were something to be grateful for but just as she was celebrating her 30th birthday alongside her wide circle of friends with an elaborate alice in wonderland themed party her world was crumbling she said quote i always kind of knew that things were going to have to be different in my 30s because the way that I was living was not sustainable I should have been having such a good time I've got all my friends here I need to be enjoying this she said the house I was staying in had a tower and I would just kind of lock myself in it instead I barely left the room there was this much need there was this need for change but I was fighting it so much I was welcoming in this new time but I was also grieving it was like a funeral for my previous life a goodbye to an era and so I decided I was going to party as hard as I could because this was the end Mm -hmm. by the next month she said she realized she needed help if she was going to turn a new page on her life and her career from September I just needed support I needed to start reaching out and my old friends I've known since I was 13 they all came over and we started crying they looked at me and said you deserve a chance to have joy she soon entered rehab where she found an additional buttress thanks to a 12-step program 
She said, quote, this process obviously has its ups and downs, but I've started realizing so much. People want my story to be this after school special where I just say, oh, look, I was an addict and now I'm sober and that's Mm -hmm. it. And it's not as simple as that. It doesn't happen overnight. Of course, I want things to be instant. I think this generation, especially we want things to happen quickly, but I've had to dig deeper. Before, I was always into the quick fix of healing, going to a week-long retreat or to a course for trauma, say. And that helped for a minute, but it didn't really ever got to get to the nitty gritty deeper stuff this Mm -hmm. time I realized that 12-step treatment was the best thing and it was about not being ashamed of that the community made a huge difference the opposite of addiction is connection and I really found that in 12-step wow I feel like I never expected this because I again it reminds me honestly of Charles Kelly I think like Cara Delevingne being like a big party girl hasn't even been like an open secret it's just like a thing people knew there's like paparazzi photos of her accidentally dropping her keys and a bag of coke flies out like there's like i think there's pictures of her doing like bumps on boats like it's just like that's her she's the party girl um so for her to like really dive into the 12 step like i love this for her i'm i think this is great yeah and i mean i think that's what she's saying is like she was the party girl she always knew that her 30s would have to be different because like that is not sustainable but i think getting to the other side of it was much harder wasn't than, just, than she, it wasn't just like oh I'll I'll detox and go to a retreat and then I'll stop right. it's like I'm addicted to this lifestyle yeah. and I need more help so the 12 step program which has been successful for so many people is yeah. where she turned but I thought oh it was also interesting where she said like it's not like I was addicted and now I'm sober like I think she's still going through it and struggling with it but she's obviously like made huge strides and I think the hardest part is just the accepting of the right, situation like, and realizing you're an addict and so she is it seems very much on the road to recovery and we've seen her a few times in the last few months and she I mean she always looks amazing yeah um on red carpets and they always you know she like when she's glammed and she's but then we saw her at that award show no she's had like some really kind of bizarre erratic behavior in the yeah. last year so to hear that she's been going through not only this like struggle with addiction but also because like kind of identity crisis about like her 20s and her 30s actually makes a lot of sense yeah it does and I'm, I'm glad that she's sharing that because I think it's something that a lot of people can relate to and yeah. also it helps us just understand her and she's someone who like so many people follow and and I feel like she's very connected to her fans like she was like the biggest model and the first like supermodel really on Instagram like yeah sharing so much and so she's not just someone who like we see from afar like I feel like yeah then her personality is so like everyone's best friend yeah you know so I feel like people will gain a lot from hearing her story yeah I'm also just really happy for her like I think you know that lifestyle that like you know socialite cocaine party girl lifestyle like that's a slippery slope so to and you're at 30 acknowledge that it's a problem and and work on it I think probably saved her life yes definitely I'm happy for her I really am and a great cover and get for Vogue yeah and she looked beautiful and so we're always talking smack but yep we are always talking smack about Vogue yeah and I guess technically this could have been like a British Vogue but American (gasps) got it wow you're totally right a check in the column for American Vogue Mm -hmm. the score is now 2000 to 1 are you ready for our next story? A little TikTok news. Is Not it, about oh, the favorite. band. It's a little TikTok news. It's brought to you by Thuma. Thuma, Thuma, Thuma. Let me be your Thuma. Introducing the bed by Thuma. Handcrafted from eco-friendly, high-quality upcycled wood, the bed by Thuma has a modern minimalist design that helps elevate any space. So if you are having a frustrating or disappointing experience putting together furniture for your bedroom, look no further than Thuma. Their bed is put together by using the timeless technique of Japanese joinery. Each piece locks into place, meaning no tools or excess hardware are required for assembly. With clean lines, subtle curves, and a lifestyle enhancing detail, bed the bed is simple sophistication for the bedroom. And their perfect platform bed just got better because you can now customize the bed by choosing between the original pillow board or the new solid wood headboard. The fabric pillow board adds softness and color to any space while the headboard offers solid and sleek support. It's made for how you live, so the bed comes with a lifetime warranty and it ships right to your door in three easy to maneuver boxes. It takes about five minutes to assemble with no tools required. The mattress, um, the nightstand and the side table are also offered by uh, Thuma and they're perfect complements to the bed. 
Uh, they also have financing options available on the Thuma website. Create that feeling of checking into your favorite hotel boutique, boutique suite, but at home with the bed by Thuma. And now go to thuma.co slash toast to receive a $25 credit towards your purchase of the bed plus free shipping in the continental U.S. Go to thuma.co slash toast. That's thuma, T-H-U-M-A dot C-O slash toast for a $25 credit. Thank you, Thuma, for sponsoring today's episode. Today's episode is also brought to you by seed. Nurturing your gut microbiome is important to support a resilient immune system. In the fall and winter months, immunity is the top of everyone's mind, but what often gets missed in the oversaturation of anti-cold and anti-flu messaging is the role that your gut microbiome plays in systemic health. So throughout uh, your life, your gut microbiome and your immune system work together carefully to coordinate your body's responses to the world and the world within us. Even before we're born, microbiomes help set the foundation of our immune system, teaching our body how to distinguish between benign substances and pathogenic antigens. Seed's DS01 Daily Symbiotic is a plant-based prebiotic and probiotic with 24 strain that has been clinically and scientifically studied for its benefits. So it's free from 14 classes of allergens that are defined in the EFSA, and that includes sugar-free, vegan, soy-free, sesame-free, gluten-free, peanut-free, glyphosate, AMPA-free, dairy-free, shellfish-free, corn-free. There's no binders, no preservatives, and 65, 65 compliant. So why Seeds Daily DS01 Symbiotic is supreme? Um, because it's specifically geared towards digestive health, and that makes sense because people take probiotics for digestive health. So there's also skin benefits. It has four specific probiotic strains that have been shown to promote healthy skin and reinforce healthy gut skin access. So avoid gut mania and head to the trusted sources for symbiotics. Start a new healthy habit today and visit seed.com slash toast and use code toast to redeem 20% off your first month of Seed's DS01 Daily Symbiotic. That's S-E-E-D dot com slash toast and use code toast seed.com slash toast code toast thank you claudia yeah well our next story tiktok is launching a series feature which oh, yeah. lets creators sell premium episodes up to 20 minutes each tiktok is opening up a new monetization spigot for creators on the popular short form video app the chinese owned app announced series a new way for creators to sell their stories as premium content with the series feature available initially only to select creators, users can post collections of premium content behind a paywall that viewers can purchase. Each individual series can include up to 80 videos, each up to 20 minutes long, giving the TikTok community, quote, a new longer format to watch their favorite creators and content, the company said. Right now, the maximum length of a TikTok video is 10 minutes. And even that, like, nobody really uses. Yeah. Um, I don't know how I feel about this. Honestly, I don't know if TikTok is a platform for long form content. I mean, it does sound like a great thing to use for podcasts, like long form. I get it. But I just don't feel like that's what people go to TikTok for. Agreed. People's attention spans have been increasingly shortened by TikTok. So then to like go back to long form, it's like that's like Netflix Confusing. giving us binging and then dropping things episodically. Like you right. invented this. We don't watch no. things for 20 minutes anymore. And I don't think a 20 minute video is enough to titillate like the average TikTok user's brain. Like they're, they, it's it's all about like the scroll. Like you watch 10 yeah. seconds of a video, like you don't even like it, you just scroll. It's it's really not how users have been Program. behaving thus far on this app. Yeah. So it's bizarre. I like that, I do, what I do like about TikTok is like they do put creators first. Like top of mind for creators is like a lot of people is there, this is their full-time job so a lot of people make money off the creator fund which is basically like youtube ads like you make money from just being a big persona on there more so than instagram tiktok really puts the creators like as a priority so that i like and just creating another revenue opportunity for creators is is great but i don't see this like really panning out yeah i'm prepared to be wrong but i think this is a flop of an idea yeah <laughs> I feel like there are some creators who might be able to parlay it into success. Like if I think about like some of the cooking videos where it's really, really quick, but it's like, hey, I actually want to make that. Like, can yeah. we see a whole ass 20 minute video of the recipe? Good point. I think like some of those people might have success, but some people are just doing dumb fucking shit and I don't need, I mean, I'm not a TikTok user, so y'all don't need to be seeing 20 minutes of that. You you liked, and sometimes what you like about a video is that it leaves you wanting more. So yeah, I don't know if people will go for this. I don't know if people will pay for this. And like people pay, 
like if I'm paying for something, I want a premium viewing experience. I want to watch it on my TV. I want it to be big budget production, like not some crapola on my phone. Yeah, I just don't like when these big apps like create habits for users and then break those habits. Like it's confusing. Yeah, I think I think it's usually unsuccessful or it takes years to, to have success. And I don't know, TikTok has like days, weeks. TikTok, the clock is ticking. TikTok, the clock don't stop. L- literally, like your time might be up soon, so. But it is crazy how like on YouTube, if you have viewers, like you have money. Yeah. Same with TikTok. Can you, if you are like a huge TikToker, can no. you live off the creator fund? Live? I mean, it depends where you live in. Um, but the creator fund in terms of like a CPM to YouTube is minimal. Mm. But what's crazy is like if you have an Instagram, 20 million followers, unless brands are sponsoring you, you don't make money from the app. Right. And by the way, because Instagram copies what everything everyone does, they have started to offer creators. Oh yeah, like they re- have subscriptions now. That and also Reels bonuses, which is very similar to like the TikTok creator fund. I'm um, like getting, you know, $150 when you hit a certain amount of views. So it's on a smaller scale and TikTok is, is good with that. But in terms of actual money offerings, it's not nearly as good as YouTube. And a lot of people feel like when they opt into the you, the TikTok creator fund to start making money, their views actually go down it significantly. It them. Yeah, I joined the creator fund when I first started TikTok. And I think you have to have like 10,000 followers. And I would check like once every six months and there would actually be $11 in there. And I had seen people saying that, you know, their views were suppressed significantly when they joined the creator fund. So I opted out because I wasn't even like, I also, okay, keep your $12. Yeah, I want my views, baby. I do. I get paid more for a brand for my views. Right. Views are a form of currency too. And I think they're more valuable than what the TikTok creator fund offers creators. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. YouTube is really, and even YouTube isn't like they're compared to everyone else. Like they look like they're extremely generous, but it's still, it's really not what creators should be getting paid. Like it's, no, it's not what they deserve. The big YouTubers make like millions of dollars from YouTube ads. Yeah, but they have like crazy engagement. Yeah. But at least yes. like that's it's something. A, it's something. It's a livable wage. Yeah. 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 No, and there are a lot of TikTok creators who have millions of followers who are in the creator fund, but haven't quit their full time jobs. Like it's really supplemental income. It's not it can't really replace just with the creator fund unless you're doing other things like starting a podcast and doing brand deals and writing a book and I don't know, whatever, a blog. Just the creator fund is not a a replacement, but just being a YouTuber is. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Everyone is launching subscription services like everywhere you go. Instagram, like we said, now TikTok, Apple, Apple, Spotify. Spotify. I like Patreon. Like, uh, well, that's the other thing. Patreon and OnlyFans cover the gamut of like extra content. And if you are a creator. Um, while these I, these sound awesome, wow, an Apple subscription, I can, you know, I don't have to go to Patreon or anything that you um, make money on through an app in the App Store, Apple takes 30% of. So when you do an Apple subscription for a podcast or you do a Spotify subscription and you're paying for it, just know 30% of what you're paying for does not go to the creator, which sucks. And that's why platforms like OnlyFans and Patreon are so popular because there's definitely like a small percentage, like a processing fee, but it's not even comparable to the 30% that Apple takes. Apple, it is, if you want to be on the app store, you literally have to, that's Cameo too. Mm. That's why if you were buying a Cameo from someone, do it on your computer. Because though that, if you send $100 on Cameo on a computer, you get creator, more. So if someone creator, signs up for our Patreon through the Patreon app. Oh, that's a good call. I don't know if you can sign up on the app. You definitely can. I feel like you could, I mean, I don't want That's go. a good call. But like, I remember when I did Cameo for um, like February, or I did it in June most recently. Sometimes you would get uh, someone buying you a Cameo and let's say your fee is $100. And sometimes it, you'll get 70 if they bought it through uh, Apple. And if they bought it through a computer, you get the 100. Well, no, Cameo takes a fee. Well, yeah, but it's minimal compared to Apple. Yeah, but it's still like 15, 20%, no? No, 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 no. It's not that much. 
Well, anyways, I like having all my stuff separate. I go here for this. I go there for that. And yeah. I, don't, I don't know if that's like sustainable. And I feel like everyone's trying to make like one large ecosystem. But mm-hmm. I don't know. I, but my large ecosystem is my phone. The phone has right. everything. That's such a good point. And then I like to be organized within it. She's so right. The ecosystem is the phone. Right? Yeah. It's like the ecosystem is my Apple TV. And then I want all my apps depending right. on what my mood is. No, you're so right. Like, why do we have to make it more complicated than like, that? Like, try so hard Everyone all the wants time. to be the one. But it's like, just be grateful for where you are and what you have. So true. Isn't it enough? TikTok? I ain't know. Isn't it enough TikTok? You're not making enough money. You don't take up enough of people's time. I ain't know. Are you ready for our next story? Yeah. Another creator, Judy Bloom oh. and her fans explore the author's legacy in the trailer for a new documentary, Judy Bloom Forever. Oh my God, that's so sweet. The life and work of celebrated author Judy Bloom is set to be documented, documented in the upcoming film, Judy Bloom Forever. On Wednesday, Imagine Documentaries and Prime Video exclusively shared the trailer for Judy Bloom Forever with People. The documentary's trailer shows Bloom, 85, and her impact on her fans as the filmmakers explore the author's journey from fearful, imaginative child to storytelling pioneer who elevated the physical and emotional lives of kids and teens to be to band writer who continues to fight back against censorship today it will be premiering at the sundance film festival and just as a celebration of judy bloom and the magic of an awkwardness of being young straight facts honestly i haven't thought about judy bloom in years but to deny her impact on me as a young woman would Mm -hmm. be disgraceful um i love this can you remind me what what books are you there god it's me margaret yes um did she also have that series with that like nutty little girl which one there were so many the fruity nut cake you know what i'm talking about super fudge no double fudge tales of a fourth grade nothing well what's the one i think the one is are you there god it's me Margaret. of course of course no but there oh uh no there's like all of these are irrelevant uglies If, oh, so wasn't mean? Ramona and Beezus? Was it? Blubber. Blubber. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, these covers. When you look at the covers, they really, uh, they bring back some, sometimes. Freckle juice. Oh, man, I'm so glad she's getting a documentary. She's so sweet. She was banned? Is that what you would read? Yeah, that's what she was banned. I don't know. Maybe like, are you there, God? And to me, Margaret was a little too provocative. Let me see. Judy Bloom ban. And by the way, it's important to note Judy Bloom is a Jewish queen. We live for that. People are fighting. Double Fudge. That was like one of her more iconic books. Yeah. But there's like a book I'm thinking about, like a fruity nut cake. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? There's another offer. I think it's Lewis. Um, Lewis Sekar, who also wrote like the books that we read when we were this age. And like, I'm just having a vivid memory, but maybe it wasn't Judy Bloom. Lewis Satcher books. Oh, he wrote Holes. He wrote, um, what do you keep saying that you think it is? fruity nut cake like I, I'm having this like really vivid memory about it's like, not roll doll books for kids you know roll doll do you and see there's the- like this nutty sick figure on the on the look up Lewis Satcher I, I feel like he might be your guy no and Lewis Satcher is the one where you have to kiss your elbow right I have I'm- literally no idea what you're talking about you don't zero Oh. Maybe I'm thinking of Amelia Bedelia. Queen. If anybody knows what the fuck I'm talking about, like, please drop a comment. Oh, my God. Yeah, this book, it's called Is He a Girl? And it's if you can kiss your elbow, but you can't, like, try kissing the tip of your elbow. You can't. It's so hard, but if you do it, you can turn into a girl. Well, that book would not fly in today's climate. Is he a girl? No, I mean, so many of these books are. Maybe that's what they're talking about when Judy Bloom was being banned. Yeah, no, I think she was probably banned for being like, you know, 
exploratory. Well, she did talk about not sex, but like vaginal health in a sense. Like it was very um, anatomical. I don't, I honestly don't remember. She was a queen. I love her. I'm glad she's getting a documentary. I hope she wins some sort of uh, film festival award. And speaking of banned books, Roll Dolls books are being like rewritten. Do you, have you seen this? Yeah, to be more, you know, PC with the times. Like Augustus Gloop isn't fat anymore, but he's like. But he is. So he, you can I change the book. Like the, they change it. I think he's like big as hell. You can change <laughs> the book, but you can't change facts. No, and, and like Augustus was a big boy. Is germane to the story. Oh, and by the way, like everyone is open. Are we erasing? Like, are we erasing fat people? The erasure of Augustus Gloop is disgusting. It's disgusting, and you know what? I won't fucking stand for it. I'm not into this. You know what? Things were different in the past. Can we just li- leave it at that? Yeah. No, we have to rewrite. And by the way, I like how there's no one talking about how Raoul Dahl is a, like a raging anti-Semite. Yeah. But he was mean to the fat people. Like, okay. No, but like Augustus, your priorities are. Augustus is still big as hell in the book, and his weight is germane to the story. Yeah, of course, because the reason he uh, uh, he's like gluttonous. Yes. So, like, congratulations, you did fucking nothing. Congratulations, you played yourself. Are you ready for our next story, which is one of our favorite subjects, Turdy Lou? Yeah, yeah. A Powerball winner who won the two billion dollar Powerball prize files for bankruptcy. Nope, is moving on up because he just bought a huge mansion in Hollywood for twenty five million dollars. His neighbors will be Jimmy Kimmel and Ariana Grande, and the house is fucking sickening. Honestly, I would have done the same thing with my earnings. Like, yeah, oh, I can't be a star. I'll live with them. Yeah. He took his payment, so it came to nine ninety seven million before That's taxes. That's insane. Which is before taxes, so he's got about half a half a bill, half a bill. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna assume. I wonder if lottery winners still uh, get mortgages. I hope he's being financially smart, like he has an advisor or something, because you should still get a mortgage, even if like there's no reason you should put down twenty five mil, put down five. Yeah, yeah. But also, he's getting sued by a man that claimed that his winning lottery ticket was stolen, oh, believing please. that Edwin is the name of the winner, was involved in the alleged theft. Mm. But the the Powerball is standing behind Edwin as the rightful, rightful winner. Um, and so, does it say what else he's bought, or is this his first big purchase? This is the first one that we know. Oh, was this like the most recent the recent winner, winner the, oh. the big Powerball, but we never got, like for a while, I feel like he didn't claim because things were quiet and we never even did a story on like, here's the winner, his life right. is changing, but his name is Edwin Castro. To, where was he from? Like California originally or now he just, because he has the money, he wants to live in Hollywood. Yeah, that's a great question. Who is Edwin Castro? He was California. Okay. So he's not uprooting his entire life. Yeah, like hopefully his family's there and they can keep him grounded. I just, I always worry about, you know, you think $2 billion, like I'll, you know, have money for generations. But not only do you get like 25% of it, it's easy to run through money. Yeah, so people think that they found, he's a FIFA streamer. They found his username and this is a message that he posted when he won. Uh, it's unclear if this is like really him, but he shared a 10 second video of uh, someone saying not to message him because they won't get a response. Quote, I just want to say anyone that's got my number, please delete it. I have no time for you anymore. <laughs> please don't message me because you won't get a reply. Life's changed now. Yes, mic drop. <laughs> I'm out. Poor people. See if you, you knew never. me before, you don't know me anymore. You don't know the billionaire Edwin Castro. Money changes people, and Edwin Castro is no different. And he's not afraid to admit it. Love and respect to him. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think when you win $2 billion, you have to change your phone number, first and foremost. A hundred percent. Like, the people that come out of the woodwork, like, hey, my foot hurts. Can you take me to the doctor? Yeah, or just, like, people who are, like, is the... the do I have this person's phone number from middle school? Like, let me try. Right. All of right. a sudden, billions of texts. No, and you really, there are so many phone numbers out there. Actually, there's this guy on TikTok who goes around and asks people who's the most famous person they have in their contacts. Like, weirdly, everyone has someone's phone number who's like 
celebrity adjacent because celebrities were normal for a while and some of them don't change their numbers and like some of them you know you get drunk out at a bar you give it out like people people have phone numbers yeah or like someone knows someone who knows someone who and it's like everyone's like passing like oh my god I have so-and-so's phone number by the way like when I was in high school I think Margot somebody got Rachel Zoe's phone number oh and it was real and like we would text her and call her and like literally bother her <laughs> and like she eventually changed her number but like, not you I admitting to harassment yeah I did, I did that, that shit. shit I did when that shit. I was really young I have a vague memory of one of my friends having Courtney Cox's phone number ah! and she but I never tried or anything it was just like enough to just have it that's funny that's so me that's so you like just call her <laughs> call her up no what if you just called Courtney up I wonder if I still have it because I nah I don't think I do because at one point I used to like change over all my contacts but there was one time where I did it manually so that I only did the need to knows it was still like 10 years ago but now I don't have her hmm. oh let me check if I still have Rachel though <laughs> Rachel I do who's the most famous person in your phone probably Gwyneth mm. yep that'll do it that'll do it what about you Besides me. I don't know. I don't know. Because everyone's like an influencer, you know? What about Iris? Yeah, I was actually just thinking Iris. Yeah. Iris Apfel is probably that's a pretty the pretty good most, one. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Was that our fifth and final? It was. Okay, great. Let's dive into Dear Toasters, our weekly advice segment that uh, we do every Wednesday. If you ever want to write in, the email account is deartoasters at gmail.com. You could write in about anything in order to get chosen. Keep it interesting. Keep it brief. Keep it funny. Keep it turdy. You know? Keep it turdy. Dear Toasters is brought to you by the State Farm Personal Price Plan. It helps you create a plan that gives you options so you get an affordable price. And it comes with a lot of benefits too, like the coverage you want, a policy that helps cover what's important to you, and an affordable price just for you. Because after all, life is just better when you can personalize your experiences. Personalizing th certain things in our life makes things so much better. Like, you know, playlists. What's more personal than playlists? Comedy. What's more personal than comedy? Poetry. What's more personal than poetry? food personalization means you have the power to choose what you want you can choose what you want to include you can choose what you want to leave out it just feels better that way and why shouldn't insurance work like that too so true Jax. like we're so similar but even our insurance plans are different you're like a homeowning queen we have different needs turdy lou everyone we have auto policies same. everyone thinks we're the same but we're not look mm -hmm. at our insurance look at our insurance that's what the State Farm Personal Price Plan is all about. You can choose to include options like bundling your home and auto policies, which means that you'll get the coverage you want at an affordable price just for you. And in the end, you'll have a policy that gets better and gives better. No, you'll have a policy that gives you what you want. Doesn't that feel better? Yeah. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or go to statefarm.com today to create your State Farm Personal Price Plan. Prices vary by state, options selected by customer availability and Availability and eligibility may vary. All right, ready? Ready. Dear Jackson Claude, I'm a 21-year-old 20, college student who was in a moral dilemma. Growing up, I always had this favorite band. Their concert um, I went to recently uh, was near my university. When I went to the concert, I had the opportunity to meet them. One of the members talked to me a lot, and we kind of hit it off, and he asked to follow me on Instagram and then proceeded to DM me saying it was nice to meet me. The next morning, I looked at his Instagram, and to my surprise, I saw on his profile that he was married with three kids. Mm. Around a year later, he DM'd me and told me he was going to be playing a concert near my school again. Oh, my God. He was messaging me and practi practically begging me to come backstage before the concert. I went to the concert, and I talked to him. It was nice and chatty, but nothing I wouldn't have said if his wife was there. After the concert, I told him that my friends and I were at the concert and that we were headed home. He responded with, if I came back with you, what's in it for me? I'm sure he's doing this with other girls he meets one touring, but do I DM the wife and let her know that her husband is actively trying to hook up with girls 10 years younger than him? And I'm sure uh, with others, he is actually successful. Does she need to know or would I be causing drama where there doesn't need to be? Sincerely, a girl who needs to find a new favorite band. Girl, drop the name. I'm curious. Oh my God. Like I thought maybe at the bottom, like she would tell us who it is. No, I have to say the way she describes it, it sounds like it's a band like we would maybe not know. Like it's like a small time band, you know? Really? Yeah, that's just a vibe that I got. No, I got like new kids on the block. Like, oh, I got like cool. big time rush. <laughs> big time rush. Like, I, we're kind of not far off from each no, other. No, like you know, on a, some sort of like reunion tour, like had yeah. their heyday. Yeah. Uh 
I don't know. This seems like a situation where it's like, mind your business. She'll find yeah, out. Yeah, because also it's like if he is Hollywood, then like they might, might have know. some sort of thing going. And I don't know. I mean, if it were me, I would absolutely want to know. But I don't know. I, I literally, I honestly do not know. I know it's like women, we like owe each other stuff. But like, this is not like a person, you know, it's not like a friend. I don't really feel honestly, she probably wouldn't even see the message. And I would say there's probably a chance that she knows he's fucking around on the road. I think most spouses of touring artists know that. So I don't feel like you would it would be this big bombshell revelation. I just feel like mind your business. Yeah, I think I would just stay out of it. I don't want to be in the middle of this. And there's probably stuff she does know. Just and might I suggest Five Seconds of Summer for a new band? I love them. Could have been Five Sauce. None of them are married with three kids. Yeah, that's true. They're all young, so it's pretty harmless. Could be like Backstreet Boys. Yeah, I mean, I, if we wanted to, we could figure this out. Drop a comment. Who do you think it is? How how could we figure it out? We literally couldn't. There's so many old bands touring. No, like band members who have three kids and wives that are still together. Honestly, I don't feel like it's that many. Kevin Jonas has two kids, right? Yeah. Oh, thank God. <sighs> Crisis averted. <laughs> <laughs> she, fuck, I can't believe that even came to the top of your mind. Kevin Jonas would fucking never, bitch. No, because I was just thinking about the Jonas Brothers, them being a band right. that came back that you would like when you were younger. Right. And the other two, like, I have one and two babies for sure. Like, I just needed to confirm. Yeah, no, I think we can narrow it down to the kids are probably young. Like, if you're looking at the, the person's Instagram and they have pictures with their kids, like, grown-ass kids don't take, like, a lot of photos with their parents. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you could say that. And also, what are we considering a band? Like, is this a duo? Would we consider a band? Because I no. had someone top of mind, even though they don't fit the profile. No. no. I'm thinking like Backstreet Boys, New Kids on the Block, Big Time Rush, I guess. Oh, wait, she said, growing up, I always had this band as my favorite. Yeah, you're right. right growing up. If she's a toaster, I'm going to say she's about 30. It's Backstreet Boys. Or New Kids on the Block. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't. I don't see that. Well, whoever I, wrote this in, you absolutely have to let us know. We will just, not yeah, share. Just, we'll, we won't share. I'm just curious now. Yeah. I'm nosy. Like, let us know. But I, I also want to know if, like, we're getting warmer. Right. Are we on track at all? Question mark. How many kids does Nick Carter have? That's an amazing question. You guys, I'm, the rest of the episode is going to be dedicated to figuring this to out. To figuring this I out. I think everybody's with us. Three. Is he married? For sure. Yep. And by the way, what we've learned about Nick Carter in recent months is that he's absolutely disgusting. Let's not forget he is uh, being accused of rape, correct? Yeah, raping a disabled fan. Right. So lest we not forget, stay away from him. Yeah, now. and his wife knows. Right, so... You, there's nothing you tell her oh he dm'd based on the shit she probably already knows it's mild and don't forget what aaron accused him of right all right next up glad hey, we got Jax. to the bottom of that and we can provide an answer which is you don't need to say anything because she knows yeah she knows and now we knows hey jackson turd hey. i'm a relatively new toaster and your show is the only thing getting me through my job I recently started as a lawyer at a big law firm and I cannot function. I'm on call basically 24-7 and I can never go a few minutes without looking at my phone. It's taking over every aspect of my life and now I live in constant states of anxiety. Even worse, I was told by people on my team that I should not make any plans during the week since I'm expected to always be around. However, everyone on my team is married and I'm the only single one, so they don't understand that I need to date during the week. I can't just go out on weekends. The only way for me to do this is to check my phone every 20 minutes or so on a date so I can communicate with work. Is this okay to do on a date I know on dates especially at the beginning that I find it rude when guys check their phones so it's so hypocritical if I do it how do I go about doing this p.s. I tell myself every day that I'm quitting to get me through so any suggestions that um are welcome that involve me keeping my job thank you okay but well, I just want to say getting a job at a big like one of those big law law firms is a huge accomplishment so congratulations to you and they pay really well so yeah they pay really well and like you have a track for your career and if you like you know keep working hard like big things will come your way so I don't think that you should quit and like you went to law school like what el what are you going to do like you're doing what you should be doing but like if I were dating and I went on a date with like a big lawyer 
and he was really like successful and like he really was doing the things he says he was doing and like at the beginning of the date he was like to me like I'm so excited to be here I just have to check my phone like every 20 minutes because of work stuff because I'm like such a big deal um I just I don't want you to think it's rude I think that you could try that like I think I would be understanding like if I like this guy I could give him a pass to check his phone every 20 minutes especially if like he's gonna be a big success and then you get to check your phone every 20 minutes which is awesome for you too yeah I think being like totally transparent about it in the beginning is fine I also think I would um is there like a woman on your team who's married who you could just like ask like if you're friendly with be like girly like how do you live like this like you're married how did you meet your husband like also it would also be beneficial for you perhaps to date another lawyer so you know they understand the hustle and the bustle so if there's any cuties in your office check it out yeah um but, but then it's like a- intra office. You know, this reminds me of a book that I read called The Boys Club by Erica Katz. It's literally about a girl who's like working in big law and she, you know, kind of spirals. And it might actually be too close to home for you to read, but I enjoyed it. So um, maybe you should read it. But it doesn't sound like you have a lot of time. But I also really like the idea of you like asking a superior, not a superior, but like somebody who's married, who obviously was on the same track as you and just being like, hey, question mark. If everyone else is married, it's clearly a possibility. Yeah. Like, how did you meet your husband? Like, how did you, I'm like really struggling to date, like, because I don't want to drop the ball on work stuff. So you have any advice for me, sister? Yeah, great question. And to find a way to like understand like what needs to be addressed. Like some things are not need to do this minute exactly. So I don't know how long you've been there, but maybe just after a certain amount of time, you'll be better at like a lot of people, you know, they move the mouse on their computer and they're still working, you know? Yeah. So something like that. But I would start with transparency and be like, listen, I'm a big shot. Find a better way to say it. Uh, And I just need to check my phone every 20 minutes. I hope that you're not offended because I'm really excited to be here. But like I also- I, I take a lot of pride in my job and I'm a really big deal. And I work really hard. I think people really respect um, honesty. If, if I were on a date with someone and they said that, I would have no problem with it. Me neither. If they just right off the bat said, I'm not like, you know, bored. I just like absolutely have to check my phone every 20 minutes so I don't lose my goddamn job and be like, oh, jobs, am I right? And then that's a great thought starting question. But that would actually like annoy me like a little bit because it's like, is he counting down like, to the 20th minute to check his okay, phone. Then you're overthinking is it. Is he listening to what I'm saying even? You're overthinking it. Yeah, give it a shot. Or find like someone else with a really demanding job, but then like how would you guys ever meet? Because you both have like two free minutes a week. Lunch. A working lunch. Yeah. Let us know how it goes. Third and final. Dear Turdy Lou and Jax, uh, hearing you say it's so rude to have no regard for your partner's sleep has really opened my eyes to my own relationship and I need your help. I sleep over at my boyfriend's place frequently during the week because he refuses to park his truck on the street at my place, so I go to him. He has to wake up for work hours before I do, and for a while now, when he wakes up, he turns on all the lights in the apartment and makes me leave when he does. To give you context, he's got a one-bedroom apartment, and he not only turns on the bathroom light and living room light, both with the doors open to the bedroom, but he also turns on his bedroom light while I'm still sleeping and makes me leave before 7 a.m. when I don't really need to be up before 9. After hearing you speak on this, I told my boyfriend that I would really like it if he did not turn on the bedroom light while I'm sleeping because it just dawned on me how selfish that behavior is. He then told me I was rude for asking that of him and that he, quote, pays for his places in the lighting bill so he can do whatever he wants with them. For more context, we've been dating for a year. He's 30. And this just all seems like childish and selfish behavior from someone I thought I'd be engaged to this year. What would you do? A confused toaster. I mean, it's hard to like, you know, I obviously need more context, but your boyfriend sounds like a prick. Yeah. He and won't it's sleep like, if at he's your being, house. If, no, if he's being a prick about the lights, like he's probably a prick elsewhere. I think you should just start to be like, Listen, I'm really tired. Um, I, I, I'm not sleeping over. I don't want to get up at 7 a.m. when I don't have to. I'm going to sleep at my place. And just like put your foot down and see if he comes to you a little bit or, or can meet in the middle. And like you should be, if he's your boyfriend of a year, you should be able to stay in his place and not have to leave when he leaves. That's fucking weird. That's like he doesn't trust you. Yeah. And like the sheer fact that he won't make the effort to go to your apartment because he has to park on the street, take an Uber, ride a bike, walk. Like, no, but it does sometimes make sense. There's always one person's apartment where it makes more sense to to stay for at. sure but to refuse to go to your girlfriend's apartment because you don't want to park like he obviously sounds like he literally sounds like a lazy oaf no he sounds not like a lazy oaf like a dictator yeah no he sounds like a prick honestly like and i would be curious if this sort of energy and behavior like funnels its way into other aspects of your relationship i'd be shocked if it didn't for sure there's no reason he needs to turn on the bedroom lights there's no reason why you have to get up at 7 a.m kicking you out is the is the most shocking part of this whole yeah, thing that's like what you do with a booty call Right, it's so rude. Like, throw them cab fare and get out. Yeah, scram. 
There's no, and the fact that he doesn't let you be in his apartment when he's not there is also cause for concern. Mikasa yeah. is su casa. I think you should start spending the night at your place more. I want to just and be able to see if he comes in. to you. Yeah, I pay the lighting bills at my place, so I'm just gonna pay them here and use lights. Enjoy how I my, I'm just gonna enjoy my lights. Yeah, it sounds like torture. Yeah, and see if he comes to you, and if not, then you realize like you're the one who's been literally putting in all the effort to everything. Yeah. Let us know how that goes. That's our show, Jax. It is Turdy Lou, Bon Voyage on your travels. Thank you, Thank you so much. Bon Voyage, Turdy Lou. Bon Voyage, Turdy Lou. I hope you have a safe flight. I hope you have a wonderful time with your popular friends. Thanks. I'll be sure to fill you in on all the details of what the popular girl said about you. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening to the Toast the Millennial Morning Show where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast anywhere podcasts can be found. So it's Spotify, Tuesday, Jump, Google, Radio, Podcast, 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 Perhaps Friday as well. Katerdy and I are working on it. Yep. Bye. We gotta coordinate. Love ya. Bye.